I've been an application pen tester for almost 10 years, and for the last few years of my career, I've been primarily focused on mobile applications. That means hacking Android and iOS apps. One of the biggest challenges when moving from web applications to mobile applications is just learning that there are tons of different tools and techniques and things that you need to learn in order to interact with those platforms. So in this video, I'm gonna go over nine different tools that you need to learn how to use in order to be a mobile application pen tester. When I was thinking about how I was going to structure this video, I decided that I'm actually gonna break it into three different sections. One section for tools that will apply to both Android and iOS, and then two sections for each of those different platforms, because there is some overlap between them, but there are also a lot of pretty big significant differences between the two that involve using different sorts of tools and techniques that wouldn't apply to the other. So that being said, Let's get started. The first tool I'm gonna to talk about is Frida. If you've watched this channel before, then you know I've made tons of videos talking about Frida. Frida is a very powerful tool that can be used to dynamically instrument an application in real time and actually change how the application behaves while you're using it. It can be used for both iOS and Android as well as several other platforms. And among other things, you can use it to bypass different protections on an application, such as SSL pinning or root detection or things like that that can get in the way whenever you're testing an application. If you wanna know more about Frida, there's tons of documentation out there and I also have a bunch of videos on my channel about it. The next tool I'm gonna to talk about is Burp Suite. This is another tool that I've made tons of videos about in the past, and every time I do, I always get some comments from people that are saying, I wanna learn about mobile hacking, or tell me more uh, about how to do Android hacking, or iOS, or whatever, and they seem to think that Burp Suite is a tool that just doesn't apply to mobile apps. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Like I said, I've been doing this for years and I can't count how many applications I've tested at this point and how many pen test reports I've delivered. And probably half of the findings that I've reported have been something that I've found with Burp Suite or something related to the API of the application. If you wanna do mobile application pen testing or bug bounty hunting or anything involving hacking mobile apps, it's very important to understand that the API is part of the mobile app. And for API testing, there's really not anything better you can learn how to use than Burp Suite. And again, just like Frida, there are tons of documentation out there about Burp Suite. They even have a whole academy section on their website where you can do labs using Burp. And I have a bunch of videos on my channel covering it as well. Next is Mob SF. I actually wasn't sure if I wanted to include this one on the list or not, but this is an open source security research platform for mobile apps where you can actually upload binaries for either Android or iOS, and it'll do some automated analysis for you, and then you can review those results. I personally don't actually use MobSF that often, but I do have some other automated tools that I use in my toolkit from my job that are like proprietary enterprise tools. And if you're planning on working for some sort of company or security firm or anyone that has any sort of budget for like enterprise tools and things, you're probably going to be using some sort of automated analysis tools in your pipeline. So being able to use a tool like MobSF or some other similar tool and being able to read through those results and understand what it's actually giving you is going to be an important skill to have. So even if you're not going to end up using MobSF specifically, it's probably a good idea if you're a beginner and trying to learn how to use these different tools and understand how they work to go ahead and install MobSF and run a few apps through it and sort of parse through the results and understand what it's saying. And if you want to learn more how to use MobSF, I actually have a video on my channel where I kind of walk through how it all works from start to finish. The next few tools that I cover are going to be specifically for Android testing. So if all you care about is iOS, you can feel free to skip this section. But the first one I'm going to cover in this section is going to be ADB, or the Android Debug Bridge. This is basically going to be the bridge that allows you to communicate with your Android device from your testing machine. You can use it to sideload applications onto the device, which will be super useful if you're ever testing anything that's like in a QA environment or anything that you can't get from the official store. You can use it to upload and download files to and from the device. You can use it to drop into a shell and interact with the file system of the device. And ADB is included in the Android SDK, which you can download for free. And I have a video that I made a long time ago going over sort of a brief overview of how to use ADB. And I also use it in pretty much every video I've ever made where I'm doing anything with Android apps. And there's plenty of documentation on the official Android developer site as well. Next is going to be JADX. 
This is a Dex to Java decompiler that is perfect for allowing you to take an APK file and decompile it in order to review the source code. There's both a command line and a GUI version. I typically use the GUI version though, just because it has a lot of extra features that are very helpful, like a search function and being able to like double click on something in one file in order to take you to another file. And JetX is another tool that I've used in tons of videos. I think I had a video from a long time ago where I kind of did an overview of it, but you'll probably see me using it in just about any video I ever do involving any sort of reverse engineering of an APK. And if you want to check out their GitHub, they also have some pretty good documentation there as well. The next tool I'm going to cover is Drozer. Drozer is a security testing framework for Android. Drozer is great for testing anything involving the Android components, like activities, broadcast receivers, things like that. And the great thing about Drozer is it actually has an agent that you install that you can interact with in real time. And this allows you to kind of build out ad hoc proof of concepts for different attacks that would usually require you to build your own APK for a malicious app and install that onto the device. Drozer is actually a pretty old tool that had kind of been left without any sort of updates for a really long time, which made it kind of difficult to use on modern systems. But within the last year, it actually got a lot of updates, so now it supports Python 3 and things like that that make it much easier to use on modern systems where you don't have to put it in like a Docker container or something in order to use it. I actually just made a video not too long ago covering all these updates and kind of showing a brief overview of how to use it. The next section is going to be covering tools that are specific to iOS. So if you don't care about iOS pen testing at all and all you care about is Android hacking, then once again, just like the previous section, you can feel free to skip this one if it doesn't apply to you. But the first thing that I'm gonna say about iOS pen testing is if you're going to be doing this a lot and it's not just like a one-off every now and then thing, if you're going to do any sort of iOS hacking on a fairly regular basis, it is really going to benefit you to get some sort of Mac device, like a MacBook or something to run your testing tools on. Every time I talk about iOS pen testing and I say something about using a Mac, I always get feedback from someone saying like, Macs are overpriced garbage, there's no reason anyone needs a Mac. And you know what, that's fine. You can have that opinion and I kind of somewhat agree with you. Like in my personal life, I am much more of like an Android, a Linux, a Windows user and I don't really enjoy the whole Apple ecosystem. But this isn't really about what our own personal preferences are. It's about doing the job we're supposed to do. And if you're going to be working with iPhones and iOS applications, it's just going to be way easier to use a MacBook or some sort of Mac device to run your tools on because there are a lot of tools out there that you're going to need or will make your job a lot easier that just simply will not work on any sort of device that isn't a Mac. So all that being said, let's go ahead and get into our first tool that you're gonna to need to know in order to do iOS pen testing. And the first one is going to be Xcode. And this is one of those tools that you really need a macOS device in order to use. Xcode is basically Apple's like whole IDE development environment. So if you do any sort of app development, either for something to like test a proof of concept or something for any sort of attack you're doing, anything involving like actually building your own iOS app, you're going to need Xcode in order to do that. Xcode is also good for a lot of different things that you might have to do in order to like debug or like fix something wrong with your device. There are several times you might get some sort of an error at some point, maybe when you like jailbroke your device, something breaks and you have to do something to fix it. And a lot of times you'll see an error that says like plug up your device to Xcode in order to resolve this error or whatever. And Xcode is also going to be very useful in order to do something called re-signing your binary. I've covered this in a video in the past, but basically whenever you get a IPA file, a lot of times you're going to have to re-sign it in order to actually install it on your device and use it. And in order to do that, you're going to have to get something called the mobile provision file, which you're going to need Xcode in order to get. And that's going to segue directly into the next tool I'm going to talk about. And this is kind of like a twofer. I'm going to cover like two tools that are very intertwined with one another. So technically I'm going to be covering four tools for iOS instead of just three, but this one is going to be node apple sign. So like I mentioned about the mobile provision file that you can get with Xcode, you're going to use that file to actually re-sign your binary using node apple sign. And there are some other things you can do with this tool as well, but actually re-signing it using that mobile provision file is easily the most common use that I have for it. 
And once you have your binary sign using Node Apple Sign, then you can use a different tool called iOS Deploy to actually install and sideload that application onto the device. So both Node Apple Sign and iOS Deploy, these are both two free open source tools that you can find on GitHub. And I use both of these tools like probably 80% of the time anytime I'm testing an iOS app, unless I'm testing in production and they actually tell me to just download the app from the App Store. These are the tools that I'm using to take the IPA file that they give me, re-sign it using Node Apple Sign, and then sideload it onto my device using iOS Deploy. And once again, I have a video on my channel going through this whole process of using Xcode to get the embedded mobile provision file, and then using that file to re-sign the application with Node Apple Sign, and then taking that re-signed binary and then installing it on the device with iOS Deploy. And the last tool that I'm gonna talk about is Hopper. This is a disassembler tool and it can be great for helping you like reverse engineer an IPA file. So you can take that binary from an iOS app and you can uh, reverse engineer it, look at the source code, look at the assembly code and see what it's doing. And this is great for finding things like hard-coded values in the binary. You can find things like API keys, passwords, things like that that sometimes might get left in the source code that shouldn't have been there. And Hopper actually has a license that you would have to buy to actually get the full experience of using Hopper, but there is a demo version that allows you to use it up to 30 minutes at a time. So unless you're going into it's like a super deep dive digging into every bit of a source code or the application you're working with is just enormous with tons of code to go through, most of the time you'll probably be able to get by with just that 30 minute window. And even if that 30 minute window ends and you have to close it, you can just reopen and start a new session. You just have to get back to where you were before your window ended. And Hopper does work on Linux as well as Mac OS. So if you don't have a Mac device and you're only trying to use Linux as your testing platform, then you might be able to get by with Hopper on Linux, but I've personally only ever used it on Mac, so I don't actually know how well it works on Linux. But if you have Linux and want to give it a shot, feel free to do so and maybe let me know how it works. And of course, Hopper isn't the only disassembly tool out there. You can also use tools like Ghidra to actually do this. I'm also not an expert reverse engineer, so uh, this area is probably my weakest area of the entire like mobile pen testing world. So if you're like an expert reverse engineer, maybe you think that Ghidra is way better than Hopper and I'm just an idiot for even mentioning Hopper. And if that's the case, that's perfectly fine. If you like Ghidra, go for it. But I personally had a pretty good experience working with Hopper whenever I needed to do some reverse engineering during a mobile pen test for an iOS app. Okay, so that was a lot. I just went over a bunch of tools. I started out trying to do nine tools, three for just a generic mobile pen testing tool set, three for Android specific, three for iOS specific. I think in total, I actually ended up mentioning 11 tools, but I hope that this was a pretty good baseline to get you started. If you're someone who maybe like me was having some experience working with web application pen testing and wanted to make a transition into mobile, or maybe you just have no experience in pen testing at all and just didn't know where to start, I hope this kind of gave you a place to get started and maybe it'll at least tell you like what to Google if you're looking for a tool that you want to learn. And again, I have videos on my channel covering everything that I mentioned in this video in a little bit more detail, some more than others. But if you're curious and want to know more about any of these tools that I mentioned, feel free to check my channel and there should be at least one video that will tell you something more about it. But that's going to be all for this video. I hope it was helpful and I hope I'll see you in the next one.